time building a Node.js web application using the Express Web Framework. I've downloaded and set up a lovely template from Creative Tim, you can see the link in the show notes, that you see here, and I think it looks really swell. But it doesn't do anything. I'm going to change that today by doing the next logical thing, which is setting up user authentication. Now I could go the obvious route using a pre-built solution such as Passport, which is a super popular Node.js authentication library, but I want to try something different and I also want to keep my job. So today I'm going to plug in Azure's authentication and authorization service for app services. Now that's a mouthful. Most people just call it easy auth. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it's a lot of fun. So let's jump right in. If you want to play along, which I hope you do, you'll have to get an express app up and running on Azure. You can download the source code for this video from GitHub. Again, use the link down below the video. And then you can build your Azure resources using the make file in the Azure directory. Now I've split the code up into start and final directories. What you see here is the start directory. You can just run that and hopefully you'll be up and running. Now I go over how to use a make file to set up Azure resources, if you're unclear, in episode number five. If you're building an Express app on your own, please note that I did need to install session middleware using Express Session, uh, and you can set it up in your app.js as you see here. So let's turn EasyAuth on. Every app service on Azure has access to authentication and authorization, EasyAuth. All you have to do is to turn it on, which you can do by heading to the portal, clicking on authentication and authorization, and then flipping the little switch. As you can see, the service is still in preview, which means you can expect things to change and that we might also have a few bumps in the road. Hopefully not, but just in case you have been warned. Turning on EasyAuth allows users to log into your site using a variety of different services, including Azure's Active Directory, Facebook, Google, Twitter, or your own custom provider. I'll just be using Google and Twitter today, and as you can see, I've already configured them for use. I'm gonna assume you've used OAuth before and you know the drill. If you don't, there are instructions linked in the show notes for how to create and register applications with Google, Twitter, and Facebook. This takes just a few minutes, and when you're done, these services will give you authentication keys that you'll need to set in the Azure portal. As I mentioned, I've done this already, so I'm just going to skip ahead because this video is running a little longer than I want, and I want to trim things down. Now that our Google and Twitter authentication keys are all set, we need to save those settings and stop and restart our app service. Believe it or not, that's all we have to do as far as Azure is concerned. This is where things get a little bit strange. What just happened? When we flipped the switch, Azure added a few URLs to our site that we can now access. Specifically, .auth login, followed by a provider, .auth logout, and .auth me. Now that's weird. How did that even work? When our users navigate to these URLs, EasyAuth kicks in. For instance, navigating to .auth login and Twitter will log them into Twitter, and wait a minute, this is confusing. At least I was super confused until I read this sentence in the Azure documentation. I tried to study that graphic that they have here, but well, it really didn't help much. So here's the deal. Your app service runs inside of a container, which runs inside of an app service web worker, which you can think of as a VM. When you turn on EasyAuth, you pipe all of your requests through it before they even hit your app. It's kind of like using a web server like Nginx, to run in front of an application server like PM2 for Node. In fact, it's exactly like that. The .auth functionality sits completely outside of your application, but inside of your app service, and it's managed by Azure, which I think is kind of neat. The obvious question, however, is, how in the world do I get access to my user's information? How do I use this API? That's a good question, and I'm getting there. But I need to show you a few more things first. If I navigate to .auth login Twitter from my app, the call gets intercepted, as you can see, and I'm redirected off to Twitter. Azure handles the structuring of the call. There's nothing I need to do. Once I click the blue authorize button here, I am sent back to the screen, which is not my app, but it looks like I'm logged in, so hooray. I'll fix this in just a second. I can log out by typing in .auth logout, and boom, I'm logged out. Or so this page is telling me. Okay, so we can log in and log out, but where is the user information and how can I access it? And this gets tricky pretty fast, but the short answer is that you can see your login information if you go to .auth me. That's a big dump of JSON and it contains all the stuff that Twitter forwarded to Azure, or rather to EasyAuth. You can save it if you want, but it involves a small hack that we'll see later on. We obviously don't want users seeing the default success page, so let's fix that by appending a post login redirect URL parameter to our login links. As you can see, I've added the .auth login URL to my social login links. Now I just need to tell them where to redirect to. 
I'm using an absolute URL here, but you can also use a relative URL since the redirect is coming from within your domain. To see these changes, I'll need to redeploy, and this is when I realize the one big downside of using a hosted auth system, like EasyAuth, I need to redeploy on any changes that I make. I don't control this functionality. This can be a bummer, but the system is so simple and deployment is so fast that it doesn't really bother me. Okay, refreshing and logging in again. Success. Right now I'm redirecting my users to the root of my site, but there's a better way to do this, which will allow me to track user information coming in, know when people are logged in, and so on. And to do that, I need to set up a login success route. As I mentioned previously, when EasyAuth is turned on, it handles all incoming requests. It'll look for a session cookie that it has planted on the client, and if the user is logged in using any of the auth service providers, it'll forward a set of headers to your application, injecting them, if you will. These headers are never seen by the client. They're internal only between the app service and your code. There are two in particular that I'm interested in, the XMS client principal ID and the XMS client principal name. There are other headers that you have access to based on the provider that you're using, but I've linked to the documentation down below and you can have a read on that if you want. I'm not gonna cover it here. The ID header will tell me the unique ID that the service uses to identify my user. The name is the common name, if provided, and I can use these values, especially the ID in my session, and use them to identify my user in my database. For instance, if they buy an order or something, I can save the principal ID and that will tell me who bought it. That's how I'm gonna identify my user. I'll save all this information in the server session for now, and then I'll redirect off to the root of my site. I'll change this logic uh, in just a little bit. If I don't have a header for some reason, I'll send them off to the login page. Now I just need to update my links to redirect to this new URL. Now that I'm saving user information in the session, I want to make sure it's available to my views. I don't want to have to send user information to my view every time I render a view, so I'll add a piece of custom middleware right above my routes, and that's important if you put this below your routes, well, they won't have access to it. I like being explicit about this kind of thing, so I'll make sure there's some kind of user exposed, even if it's an anonymous user, with a logged in property so I can check that in my view. I can now update my site's navigation to be a bit more personalized. I can check if the user is logged in, and if they are, I can say hello and show a logout link. Otherwise, the login button will remain. Typical authentication and personalization stuff. The only way that we can see if our code change works is by redeploying. All right, let's try it out. Refreshing, and hey, look at that. It works. Well, sort of. If I click log out, I still see this page. Well, worse yet, I know I've been logged out by the system, but my information is showing. That's not good. But it's easy to fix as the problem is that my session is still alive in Express. I need to kill it. I can fix this by adding a query string parameter to my logout link, which is oddly called post logout redirect URI as opposed to URL. And I'll do the same kind of thing that I did when logging in a user. I'll redirect to a special URL that kills the session. Redeploying one more time. Now well, you get used to this after a while. Hey, look at that, it works. When I log into the site, I have a nice greeting with crappy formatting, but it would be nice if it said my name, not my Twitter handle or my Gmail address. There's so much lovely information available in .authme that I can use to personalize my site. So let's see how we use it. The neat thing is that I can use JavaScript to personalize my site. I don't need to change any server code. Some see this as a major strength of EasyAuth. Others like to use server-side code whenever they can. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. For now, let's take the path of least resistance and write some code on our client. I have this amazing free template from Creative Tim, the material template, it's a free version, and it has a groovy chunk of HTML that I can use for displaying user information, including an avatar and a dropdown. I'll plug that in instead of my ugly greeting, and notice that I've added a class name to the user's avatar, as well as given an ID to the name heading. I'll be setting those in just a minute. I'm gonna keep this as simple as I can by not using a framework other than Axios, which I like a lot for JSON requests. If you're a Vue or a React fan, go for it. Because I'm a bit of a diehard server-side guy, I'm gonna wrap this JavaScript in an if statement because I don't want this going off if the user isn't logged in. That's me, and I'm not sorry for it. I'll start by creating an async function that pings .auth me and pulls down some JSON. The return JSON is oddly an array, so I need to work with that and save the first element, which is the data that I want, into a variable. Now it's just a matter of turning that array into a usable object, which I'll call user. 
I'll pull provider and user ID off the root, but I already have the user ID in my session code. So neither of these things is going to help me personalize my site. I need to access the claim data. The claim information will vary based on the authentication provider as well. If I log out here and log back in using Google, for instance, you can see that the claim information, my name, email, and so on, is different. Each user claim is returned as an array element, which is an object with a type spelled TYP, key, and a val value. To complete the task, I need to invoke my function using the return information to update the DOM. Notice here that I'm using document.getElementsByClassName for the avatars. The reason is that I might have multiple places where I want to show the user their lovely face, such as on the profile page. You know what we get to do next. That's right, deploy, deploy, deploy. Logging in once again, and hey, it's my Google avatar. This looks much better. Clicking my profile and I can see my daughter's happy screaming face, and I call that success. Let's see if we can do all of this server-side, shall we? The short answer is that we really can't. We still need some client code, but that's okay, because it's super hacky and we can feel good about being bad. I'll create a new view, which I'll call loginsuccess.ejs, and then I'll copy and paste, like a good front-end dev. At the top, I'll output a message that says the login was successful and the user is about to be redirected. Instead of updating the DOM, however, we'll just redirect the user to a new route, which I'll call login remember. I'll send along the name and avatar, the two bits of information that I need, and then save the information to the session. Now, ideally, this would go into a database so I could access it later, but this works fine for now. Personally, I kind of like the client-side approach, and do me a favor, don't tell my friends I said that. Redirects after a login feel icky, but turns out they're actually quite normal. But it's an option if you want to use it. Okay, one last thing to do. I need a way to make sure that certain routes are not reachable unless a user is logged in. The standard way to do this with Express is to have an ensure logged in middleware function that you can plug into your route. All I need to do here is to check for that special header. If it's present, we're good, and I'll fire next. If not, I'll redirect to the login page. Wait a minute, that's kind of hacky, and even I can't feel good about this. So let's be nice and remember where the user is trying to go before we redirected them. I can do that using the original URL property on the request. I'll save that in the session, and in my login success route, I'll check for it. Great, let's try it out. I will deploy one more time, navigating to the profile page, and I am redirected, as I would expect. Logging in, and boom, I am on my way. That is pretty seamless. All right, well, that's it for me. I have to say, I had a good time making this video. I really like EasyAuth. It makes things pretty simple if you don't want to roll your own authentication or use a third-party package. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.